Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection September 20, 2022 Tuesday Memorial of Saints Andrew Kim Taejian, Priest, and Paul C. H. N. G. Ha Sang, and Companions, Martyrs The 25th Week in Ordinary Time We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Memorial of Saints Andrew Kim Taejian, Priest, and Paul C. H. N. G. Ha Sang, and Companions, Martyrs. This first native Korean priest was the son of Korean converts. His father, Ignatius Kim, was martyred during the persecution of 1839 and was beatified in 1925. After baptism at the age of 15, Andrew traveled 1,300 miles to the seminary in Macau, China. After six years he managed to return to his country through Manchuria. That same year he crossed the Yellow Sea to Shanghai and was ordained a priest. Back home again, he was assigned to arrange for more missionaries to enter by a water route that would elude the border patrol. He was arrested, tortured and finally beheaded at the Han River near Seoul, the capital. Paul Chong Hsang was a lay apostle and a married man, aged 45. Christianity came to Korea during the Japanese invasion in 1592 when some Koreans were baptized, probably by Christian Japanese soldiers. Evangelization was difficult because Korea refused all contact with the outside world except for an annual journey to Beijing to pay taxes. On one of these occasions, around 1777, Christian literature obtained from Jesuits in China led educated Korean Christians to study. A home church began. When a Chinese priest managed to enter secretly a dozen years later, he found 4,000 Catholics, none of whom had ever seen a priest. Seven years later there were 10,000 Catholics. Religious freedom came in 1883. When Pope John Paul II visited Korea in 1984, he canonized Andrew, Paul, 98 Koreans and three French missionaries who had been martyred between 1839 and 1867. Among them were bishops and priests. But for the most part they were lay persons. 47 women, 45 men. Among the martyrs in 1839 was Columba Kim, an unmarried woman of 26. She was put in prison, pierced with hot awls and seared with burning coals. She and her sister Agnes were disrobed and kept for two days in a cell with condemned criminals, but were not molested. After Columba complained about the indignity, no more women were subjected to it. The two were beheaded. A boy of 13, Peter Ryu, had his flesh so badly torn that he could pull off pieces and throw them at the judges. He was killed by strangulation. Protas Chong, a 41-year-old noble, apostatized under torture and was freed. Later he came back, confessed his faith and was tortured to death. First Reading A reading from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 1 to 6 and 10 to 13. Like a stream is the king's heart in the hand of the Lord. Wherever it pleases him, he directs it. All the ways of a man may be right in his own eyes. But it is the Lord who proves hearts. To do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Hardy eyes and a proud heart. The tillage of the wicked is sin. The plans of the diligent are sure of profit. But all rash haste leads certainly to poverty. Whoever makes a fortune by a lying tongue is chasing a bubble over deadly snares. The soul of the wicked man desires evil. His neighbor finds no pity in his eyes. When the arrogant man is punished, the simple are the wiser. 
When the wise man is instructed, he gains knowledge. The just man appraises the house of the wicked. There is one who brings down the wicked to ruin. He who shuts his ear to the cry of the poor, will himself also call and not be heard. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 119 verse 1, 27, 30, 34, 35 and 44 Let our response be, Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Blessed are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. The way of truth I have chosen. I have set your ordinances before me. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Give me discernment, that I may observe your law, and keep it with all my heart. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Lead me in the path of your commands, for in it I delight. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. And I will keep your law continually, forever and ever. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Gospel Reading A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 8 verse 19 to 21. The mother of Jesus and his brothers came to him, but were unable to join him because of the crowd. He was told, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside, and they wish to see you. He said to them in reply, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel Here Jesus relativizes family relationships. To our ears, his words can sound both strange and cold. But Luke's audience knew that the cost of receiving Jesus' word led them into opposition and family ruptures. Choices had to be made between Jesus and family. Jesus comes first. Everyone who hears and acts on his word is a relative of Jesus. Lord, fidelity to your word is the only basis for my Christian identity. As I daily sit at your feet, may I draw nourishment from listening to you and may I reveal you through my actions. There is your family, Lord Jesus Mary, and the others of the household, perhaps Joseph was already dead. Now you widen it. We become your family not by birth, nor by being female, nor by rituals, but by hearing and acting on God's word. Our prime relationship in life is our relationship with God. This explains why Jesus' words about his mother and brothers even the strongest family bonds and ties fit into a prior relationship. We all enter into a conception. We belong to God before we belong to anyone else. Our relationship to each other is deepest in our common belonging to God. Our relationship with God grows by listening to His Word, praying over His Word, and translating His Word into Christian life and service. Hearing the Word and doing it for Jesus these two verbs go together. Once he said that those who do so are building their life on rock, rather than on sand so that they can be strong in the midst of difficulties. Here he goes even further, identifying those who hear the word of God, and do it with his own innermost circle, with his own mother and brothers. I thank Jesus for this great compliment, and ask for the grace to be able to put into practice the word of God in my life. 
not as an obligation but as a privilege.